Good morning, everyone. It's Kay Kaltoff, and welcome to a Stamp and Chat with Kay. It's exciting to be here. We're going to do a fun fold card, fun and fancy. So that's kind of a bonus. And it's a little more complicated than what I normally do. So who knows how long this will go? <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Philomena. It's good to have you here. Good morning, Karen. It's nice to have you here. Yvonne is here. Hooray! Good morning. Charmaine is here. Oh, this is wonderful. All of my favorites. Thank you for joining in. You guys are so loyal. I just, oh, my heart. Thank you. Well, I've got my coffee. I just want to let you know, too, this is the only Facebook Live I'll be having this week. I am going to take Friday off. Yes, I am. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Rhonda. Nice to have you here. Hello, Elaine. Great to have you here from sunny North Carolina. Oh, and you're already sharing. Welcome. Oh, good. Thank you for doing that. What am I giving away? I'm giving away something really good. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, goodness. I hope I put it out. I did. Ta-da! I'll do a half pack of the Gilded Gems for each winner and I'll announce those on Thursday so you have a couple of days to share and comment and let me know where you're watching from all the good stuff good morning good morning yes you want to know why I'm taking Friday off because my husband's hours were cut he is now only going to work 80% of his week and so that means he's getting every Friday off. And that's like been a dream of his for a long time. So <laughs> thank you, COVID. So, I mean, we're lucky in that we've been very healthy and we just really do nothing. We just stay home all the time. <laughs> but I figured since he is taking the day off, I would take the day off with him. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Julie. Julie's already sharing. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Oh, how wonderful. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to show you some cards I got in the mail. I am the most blessed demonstrator on earth because I have so many wonderful customers and downline members who share their creations with me just out of the blue. Gets me opening up my mailbox and skipping all the way back to the house, almost literally. And the first card I want to share with you is from a customer. She's been a long time customer. And she's using a stamp set from days gone by. It was called Sheltering Tree. I'm sure many of you remember it. It was in our catalogs for a long time. And she went through, she said, a little period of time where she liked to flock things. And so Sheltering Tree was a great card for flocking. Um, so I'm going to show it to you. I think you guys will really like it. So it looks like this. Isn't it cute? And it's so bright and green and springy. And as I look out my window, what do I see? I see snow. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I know. It's the high today is supposed to be like 33. So a card like this is really, truly a good old shot in the arm telling me it will not always be winter in Minnesota. We will have a spring. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosemary Johnson. You are a true truly delightful customer and friend and she just wanted to give me a little encouragement and she said I appreciate so much that you continue to do your Facebook lives through these crazy times well I will continue to do my Facebook lives through these crazy times because uh, it makes it helps ground me it helps me feel normal and hopefully that makes kind of you feel that way too plus it's a little fun it's a lot of fun <laughs> truth be told all right, the next card I got was from a downline member, and you know it's good when you get the envelope and it's all decorated, like the whole envelope was decorated. Um, a little tree, tree stamped in the bottom, and just this lovely antiquing all over it, and it was so gorgeous, I knew it was going to be good when I opened it up. In fact, my daughter saw those trees at the bottom of this card and she thought oh that might work on my wedding invites mom so so we dug out the stamp set so this is the stamp this is the card she sent me this is from Laura Erickson one of my downline members 
It's really nice. And I think it uses the stamps at waterfront, if I recall correctly. And then she has some antique background back there. I'm not sure where the sentiment it's from. It might be from Itty Bitty Greetings. It's, a, it's the greeting set that I'm using today. But if not, there's other little sentiments that can be used in that spot. But really cute card. All right. So thank you so very much, Laura Erickson. You are a true sweetheart. And then I got this card in the mail. It, it was a good card week for me. This one is from my customer, Elaine. Elaine Wheeler. And she sent me a beautiful Easter card. And I'm not sure where the hydrangea stamp comes from, but I can tell you that the sentiment is from Timeless Tulips. So here's a look at that one. Elaine is so sweet to me. She is like the best customer any demonstrator could ever, ever ask for. She's always sending me cards. I mean, how lucky am I? Isn't it pretty? So I very, very much like it. And it was a very pretty bright spot at Easter. So thank you so much, Elaine. And then the last card that I got in the mail, I got in the mail just today. My mail came early for some reason, which is kind of rare these days. And it's a thank you card from my downline member, Tammy Nelson, who lives in North Mankato. And it's so pretty. I, you know, it uses the Blackberry Bliss cardstock along with the Pleasant Poppies paper. Just a pretty, pretty thank you card. She was actually sending money, so I should be the one thanking her. <laughs> But no, she's always being so sweet and sending me cards. So thank you so much, Tammy Nelson. I love it. So pretty. All right. And I think it's time to flip the camera down and we'll start making our masterpiece. So this is what it looks like. And we will open it up. So it's a fun fold like this. It's a great card for these times because it says sending prayers on the outside and then on the inside it says may God bless you and keep you. I love it. All right, so let me go ahead and flip this down. Oh yes, so many of you are exciting about the fun fold and you're also very exciting excited about the sentiment too. Well, so am I. Here's the card again if you'd like to see it. And I have two cards here because I wanted to show you that the sentiment could be moved around on this card depending on how your designer series paper is behaving. If you happen to have more of an open space or a part that you want to um, you know, put, you know, if you want certain colors in a certain place, like for example, on this card, I really liked how the, uh, terracotta tile flowers down here matched in so well with the background. So I put the sentiment up here where there's less terracotta showing. And then down here, again, it was kind of the same thing. I had a, a whole burst of terracotta tile uh, colors up in this section of the card. Well, I didn't want to really cover that up with my sentiment, so I just moved the sentiment down to the lower right-hand part. So either spot, it works wonderfully. And also, you'll notice how beautiful the gilded gems look on this card. It really adds a lot. Now, you probably can't tell so much in the Facebook Live, but they have such nice sparkle. Let's see if I can... And you'll notice also I used gold foil um, just to accentuate the gold gems. I just thought that was so pretty together. All right, so let's look at what we're actually using today. We are going to be using the Ornate Layers dies. This is something that Stampin' Up! is offering as an early release. So starting in April and going through May 31st, you are able to order from this product suite. You can get the entire product suite, of course, um, or you can get parts of the product suite. Now, if you go to my blog, stampingtoshare.com, you will find links on every single post that I'm putting up through April and May that will lead you to this PDF so that you can get a good look at it yourself. 
There's another stamp set that is part of this suite, and it's called the Ornate Thanks Step stamp set, which has some dies that are more like edgelets or border dies. Just to let you know, these are on back order, but they are still letting us order them because I had uh, several customers last week who ordered this bundle or ordered the dies, and I was able to place those orders for them. So that was really good news. Even though they will probably not ship out until May, you can still get them on your order if you're trying to get your total up to, say, $75 in order to get my uh, gift with purchase, which happens to be... The Gilded Gems. Yay! And then this is the beautiful um, Ornate Layers die, which we're using today. Along, uh, We're not using the Ornate Style stamp set, but you can purchase this as a bundle if you want to and save 10%. One of the other things that is really cool about this whole um, Ornate product suite is the Designer Series paper. So let me just show you what that looks like. And we're going to be using that today. This was just gorgeous, I thought. And so that is the one I picked to use today. And then we have some other ones that are just stunningly gorgeous. And some of the pieces also have gold foil on them. So that looks really nice. Here's another one with gold foil. You can tell because it sort of shimmers and shines as I'm paging through it. And here's more. So there's four sheets with gold foiling, and then there are two sheets that that just have uh, very nice, um, our normal very nice paper, nice and thick. This is very high quality paper. All right, so let me go ahead and we'll get started creating this card. So let me share with you um, our card base first because that's probably the most complicated so I'm making two cards because I always give away two cards uh, when we do our giveaway and I just want to share with you the the very the very uh, mechanics of making this card so we've got four and a half I'm sorry I've got a, it's a lucky thing I write these down <laughs> although once in a while I do write them down wrong I double check to make sure they were right it's a four and a quarter by nine and a half and it's scored at five and a half. So this gives you this little fold over piece right here. So that's where we're gonna put our gold foil. The color is terracotta tile, for those of you that are wondering about the color. Okay, so I have two pieces cut because we're making two cards. The second piece that we'll be attaching to the base part is three and a half by six and a half and it is scored at one and a half. So you have this little flap and it is going to be attached to your card like this. So that when the mechanics of this work, so this is folded in this way, this is folded down like this. So that's the basis of your fancy fold card. So let's go ahead and put that together. I'm going to grab my bone folder here so we get a nice, uh, good fold that will stay in place for us. And then we're going to fold this one over. And again, I'm leaving these, these uh, measurements out here so you can see them as I'm putting this first one together. So again, we're going to be opening it up so that this shorter flap on the bigger panel opens to the right. And then we're gonna take this shorter flap and we're going to attach it on the left side like this. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue because I wanna be able to wiggle this so that it's pretty even. So let, I just put some glue on it and I'm going to eyeball it because I, pretty, I have pretty good luck eyeballing things. So I know it's hard for you to see this, but just imagine that I am trying to get about the same amount. Oh, what can I do so that you can see this? I know, I'll put this little mat here. What I'm trying to do is have the same amount of terracotta tile on the upper as on the lower. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that. And the glue allows me just to wiggle it a little bit. One thing you want to be careful of is uh, when I was making these cards up, I made 
uh, several of them. I did notice that it was sometimes easy to not quite get that on straight, so it's really important that you get that on straight horizontally as well. All right, so there we have our first one done. Now we'll go ahead and do the second one. So once again, the bigger panel is going to be four and a quarter by nine and a half, scored at five and a half. And the smaller panel is three and a half by six and a half, scored at one and a half. And we're going to put the glue on the smaller panel. And then we're going to set this in. And again, I apologize. I know it's hard for you to see probably what I am doing, but just know that I am aiming to get the same amount of spacing on the top as I am putting on the bottom and trying to make sure that it stays horizontal. Because you will notice kind of if it isn't, um, especially when you get that gold panel on. All right, so we have our fancy fold. This is it. This is the mechanics of making your fancy fold card. It really isn't that hard. It's just basically gluing two pieces of cardstock together and knowing how big to make those panels and where to fold them or score them. All right, so now the next thing is to work on our sentiments. So we are going to actually do some some uh, paper saving things. We are gonna actually stamp both sentiments onto our inside panel and then one of those sentiments we're going to punch out with our classic label punch. So both of these are cut at four by five and a quarter. This is just your standard panel that leaves a quarter inch border all the way around. And then I'm gonna get out my Stamparatus and I have it all ready to go here because I want May God Bless You and Keep You over here to the right. And then I'm going to do Sending Prayers over here to the left. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I have it lined up so that when I put my crumb cake on, I'm, I always kind of use the Stampin' Up! logo here as my guide. So I'm going to set that in. And then I'm just gonna take the magnet and put that down right there. And that magnet will hold so well. If you're feeling insecure and you're thinking you might have to go a couple of times, it's a good idea to put a magnet on the opposite side as well. Just be very careful that you don't get both magnets um, too close together or they will snap together and break. Fortunately, you can purchase additional magnets if you um, break your original magnets, and I have had to do that on occasion. All right, so we're just gonna put a stamp set down here to kind of, oh, and I should show you what, what stamp set we're actually using. We're using the Itty Bitty Greetings. It's a huge stamp set. I do a Happy Stampers uh, stamping token program. So for every $50 on a $50 increment on your order before shipping, handling, and tax, you get a token from me. When you get 10 tokens, you get to pick any stamp set of your choice. And I've had a number of customers pick this because it's a big stamp set and it's expensive. So it's kind of fun to get that with your Happy Stamper tokens and get it for free. So this is the Itty Bitty Greetings stamp set that we're using. So I picked again, Sending Prayers and May God Bless You and Keep You. Now I'm going to take our Early Espresso ink and I'm just inking these up. All right, then we just fold it down, give it a little press, lift it up. Perfect, perfection. All right, so let's go ahead now and do the same thing for the other panel. We're just gonna set it down, and again, I use the logo as my guide because that's how I set it up when I was getting the Stamparatus ready for today. Again, we take our magnet, put that down, and again, if you're insecure, use the other magnet down here. Um, that's what magnets are for. They make, they make you feel a little more secure when you're stamping because then you have that second chance to redo those sentiments if they don't come quite right the first time. So now we're just gonna take this, flip it over, and again, just a light little press. Don't be in such a hurry. Let, it, let the ink take its time so it has a chance to get onto the paper very beautifully. And I would say that's very beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to set this aside. 
just going to pull this out and set this over here on my little table because we're all done with our stamping, if you can believe it. I'm just going to set these aside for a second because what I want to do is a little more assembly on our card here. So we're going to bring our cards back into the photo. And let me grab the next items that we're going to need. So we are going to need... I want to put the gold panels on. Here they are. So we have two gold panels that we'll want to put on our card. And they are three and three fourths by four inches. That's the size that we are working with. And I am going to use snail to attach these because what sometimes happens if you've used glue on something, say, like Whisper White, Very Vanilla, or Foil, you end up with these not-so-lovely glue lines all the way around. So I don't want to take that chance. So I'm just going to use my Stampin' Up! Snail, which, by the way, is awesome. And it's a very good product to use if you find out that your Stampin' Up! order with me is at $47.50, and you want to get to $50, just add on a snail refill or a some dimensionals and then you'll have your order up to 50 and you'll get that happy stamper token all right so we've got our snail on this first one and we're gonna set this in and I'm just gonna set this in just like this and that way I am looking around to make sure the top the bottom and the left hand side are all even and that looks good so now, because I don't want my hands to smear anything, I flip it over and burnish it from the back. Not that there's any ink there, but it's a good habit to get into. Um, because if there was ink there, you could smear it. So this, is, this looks good, doesn't it? So we're going to do the exact same thing now to the other card. Take this, and we're going to add our snail all the way around in a nice square. And that looks good. And again, we're gonna set this in so that the top, the bottom, and the left-hand side are all nice and even. Flip it over and burnish from the back. All right, looks fantastic, right? Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is I don't know, let me bring the original card back into the camera here. You'll notice that I am using crumb cake on the inside. I'm using crumb cake on my sentiment. And I wanna bring a little crumb cake into the front of the card. So I am going to use crumb cake on the flap behind my very ornate border die. Okay, so to do that, I will tell you how big to cut that piece of crumb cake. And here it is. You want to make this one and five eighths by three and a half inches. Because this panel here is three and a half inches. And if you do one and five eighths, the reason that's such a good number is because that allows you to set this in so that the exact perfect middle of your border is centered over the top of that crumb cake. Just a small little detail that you don't even notice, but your eye and your brain are noticing, and it makes a big difference in how your card looks. So let's go ahead and we'll just glue this on. Again, I like gluing just because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room, which is going to be handy. And I want to set this in so that it is dead even with this gold panel. So I'm going to flip it over and I am lining up my crumb cake panel with my gold panel. That edge of the gold is where I'm lining up my crumb cake. Let me hold this up to the camera so you can see exactly how good that looks. I love it. And we're going to do the exact same thing to this other one. We're going to use glue on the crumb cake panel. 
again, that just helps me with a little bit of wiggle room, which is what I am striving for. And we're lining it up with the gold so that we have a, pan, a line that goes all the way down, follows the gold to the crumb cake and back down to the gold. And we're putting that on the smaller flap. All right. The next thing we want to do is, is I want to, there was one that I didn't burnish and it's bugging me. So let me do that. There we go. All right. So now we're going to take these beautiful, beautiful panels. And I know you probably can't see them because it's too dark. So let me, let me put them like this so you can see what we're doing. So here are these beautiful ornate panel dies. Oh my gosh, ornate layering dies. And let me show you which one that I used. I used this, this big one here. See, that fits perfectly. Now I did have to use my Stampin' Up! die brush to get all those little pieces out. And in fact, even after that, I used my my take your pick tool, I used not this flat end, but I used this pokey end, and I just flipped it over and made sure that I had all of those little uh, circles punched out because I want this card to be absolutely perfect so that I can send it on to my winners and they'll just be thrilled with it. Time for a sip of coffee. If you guys have coffee, you should sip too, and we can all sip together. <laughs> Oh, I needed that. All right, now we're gonna add some panels in here, some really pretty panels, the Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. Get ready, take a picture, crazy measurements, but I had to do it that way because I wanted everything to show up perfectly in these rectangles. So it ends up being two and three sixteenths by three and nine sixteenths. I know. I know, but you know, perfection doesn't always fall on the quarter inch. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. <laughs> so it's two and three sixteenths by three and nine sixteenths. That, my friend, is perfection. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to put this one here, and I think we're going to put this one here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking at my flowers and sometimes your flowers sort of have an up look and sometimes they have sort of a down look. This is definitely the up look, so it needs to go this way. And this one, this one could go either way, I think. This could be, this could be one of those looks where you could go either way. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it this way and then I'm going to put one of the sentiments going to the left at the base here so that we can keep this pretty, pretty, this pretty flower accentuated. And for this one, I think I'm going to put my accent over here. All right, so knowing that, let's go ahead and glue these pieces in. Um, for this, I can just use snail. I could use my glue, but we can just center this in and just make sure that all everything is perfect. Let me hold this up to the camera so you can see why we had to do those crazy measurements. It's because we wanted it to be perfect and now it is. You can see it just fits in perfectly amongst all those little circles. All right, we're gonna do the same one with this one. We'll set this in. Let me look at this one more time. Maybe I do want it like this. You know, I think I do. I'm gonna give you guys a little clue about when you're trying to figure out which way your paper should go. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have a darker color, your mind expects that darkness to be towards the bottom. And you'll notice I have this, this daisy here that's really dark. So I wanna keep that towards the bottom. I think it just looks, 
it just looks more balanced that way. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna make this the bottom and this the top on this one. And the same here, we've got a lot of darkness down through here, so we'll make this the bottom. Okay, now, knowing that, I just have to decide if I'm how I'm going to do my sentiments. So, first thing we need to do is because we're accentuating our sentiments with a layer of gold foil, we're going to take our classic label punch. We're gonna, and I've just got a couple of little scraps here, just a couple of little scrappy strips. And I'm cutting out two of these classic labels. There we go. And one is going to go over here and one is going to go. I think we're gonna put that one there and we're gonna put this one here. Perfect, I like it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and we're going to punch out our sending prayers. So on the one that's going here, we want the sending prayers so that it's more to the left because part of this is going to be cut off. That looks good. And then over on the other one, keep these together, we are going to do the same thing except we're going to move it the other direction. Since we're putting it up here, we want the prayers to be more to the right. So I'm just putting it in here and punching it out. And now all we have to do is layer this up. So I'm going to just do it with a little bit of glue. I mean, I'm barely, barely touching the glue on here. You don't need very much. Glue will hold really, really well. And you're just gonna set this on so that a little border of gold shows all the way around. And that looks super nice. We're gonna do the same thing with this one over here. We are gonna put just the tiniest little bit of glue on the back towards the bottom of the sentiment. And we're gonna do the same thing, set this in so that there's just a skinny little line of the gold foil showing behind our sentiment. Give that a couple seconds to dry and then we're going to snip that off and trim it and you could put this whoops I've just bent this you could put this on and trim it before you actually put your panel down but this is just such a tiny little trim I'm just gonna do it freehand with the scissors um, but let's go ahead and put these sentiments the inside sentiments into our card so I'm gonna set these aside and we're going to grab our card pieces here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take, again, some more of this pretty paper from the Ornate Garden paper pack, and it's cut at one and a half by four inches. And we're going to layer the inside panels of our cards. So how beautiful is this? So I think we're gonna go this way. So I'm just gonna add some snail to the back here. Looks great, and this one, I think we'll go this way. Keep it so the flowers look like they're looking up. Whoops, I got that a little off. I still have my handy dandy trimmer from Celebration, so I'm just going to trim that up so that everything is nice and even. And I think that one also needs to be trimmed just a tiny little bit. All right, there we go. Okay, so we covered up our sentiment punch out with the paper so no one will ever know it's even there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put that inside panel into our card. So I'm just going to, again, just use a little snail. We'll just do two strips. We don't want it too loose <laughs> just because we have our punch out here. So we don't want someone peeking back there and finding that. So I am doing two strips this time, one at the top, one in the middle. And that all looks good. We'll do this. We'll just pop this in on this one as well. 
So again, one across the top, one across the middle, and then just pop that in. So all four of your borders are nice and even. And that looks great. Okay, now let's go ahead and I think this is ready to go. So I'm going to take my scissors and I am just going to cut just a little bit off and then we will set this in like this. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna put that on with snail and set this over here at the top. Nope, I got the wrong one. I wanna do that one over here. Set this over here like so. Beautiful. And then we're gonna do the same one for this one. Set this in just here. There we go. So now you can see how you can play around with those sentiments and put them wherever you want so that you can kind of accentuate your flowers or wherever you want them to be. Of course, I'm not liking this one because I put it too close to the bottom, I think. So I'm just going to refix that. Ooh, I'm almost out of snail. Actually, I am out of snail. Hold on a second. Okay, so let me reposition this one so it's a little bit higher. There, that's perfection. There we go. So we have one here at the bottom and one at the top and it just looks so lovely. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these over and add some dimensionals. This is actually a pretty card, pretty easy card to make once you have all of your um, pieces cut out. It probably takes longer to cut out and measure out everything than it does to actually assemble the card. The assembly part is pretty easy. So here we go. Just five little dimensionals in each one. Oh, Cindy just said, the ornate garden suite is so stunningly adorable. It's a must have for everyone. I agree, stunning is a good word that goes well with this product suite. All right, so here's one. I'm going to set this in just like so. So I'm just getting everything even. There we go. One done, except we haven't done the gilded gems. That will really make it pretty. But let's go ahead and keep working with this. Karen has already ordered hers. She's getting it tomorrow. Well, that'll be fun. You'll have some fun things to do this weekend playing with this product suite. In fact, go ahead and case my card. It would be lovely to have somebody so excited about it that they just go ahead and case my card. All of you have permission to do that. You don't even have to ask. All right, so here's the next one. We're just going to set it right in the middle of this front panel. And there's our beautiful fancy fold. Beautiful. Now we're going to take the gilded gems and I just want to give you a tip. I think I got this prepped. I think I need a drink of coffee. Hold on. I'm frantically looking around on my desk. Oh, I found them. All right. So this, this is a little tip for those of you that you know, where do you put things? So what I like to do is I like to take my little gems and I like to cut them out individually, but not take the peelies off. So I do this for like a dozen of them or so. And then I can grab the sizes that I want. So this looks like a medium size. And here we have a large size. And then we have a little size. And I just pop those all down on my card. So you can see they have that little bit of cellophane still attached to them. So they're, they're all loose. But it's clear. So you can see exactly where to go. So you can just kind of move them around on your card to find out where you like them the best. Now, of course, I did this in advance. So I know exactly where I want these to go. So when my sentiment is up here, 
then I'm going to put them like this. So rather than putting these on, I put these back in the jar. Well, actually, I'll put them over here on this card. And then I go ahead and I use my, take your pick and use my, my package and take them from there because I like to keep these just handy for figuring out where I want them to go when I'm designing a card. But then when, it, when I have it all figured out, as you know I do, I, um, hold on. Have to get my take your pick tool ready. Then I can do my take your pick tool and I'll just put them on where I have decided they look the best. So I put a large one here, a medium sized one here, and a little one up here by the sentiment. So this card is complete. It looks so lovely. And then for this one, again, I felt like I had to move them around a little bit to see where I wanted them because they didn't, you know, they don't look quite right until I figured out exactly where I wanted them. And so in this particular case, I thought the little one looked the best over here and then the large and the medium look the best over here. So again, I have this all figured out in advance, but the way I figured it out was to keep about a dozen of my Gilded Gems in a little container, and that's what I use when I'm in the design phase of my cards. So again, I'm just gonna take my Take Your Pick tool and I'll grab a large one here, and we will put that large one right here, and then we'll grab a medium one and put that up here and then we'll take a little one and we'll set this over here as an accent to the sentiment and that just looks so lovely so let me bring the cards here into the picture here we go here are the two cards we made today aren't they beautiful so much fun so thank you everybody so much for joining me today and for being a part of my stamp and chat with Kay you can always uh, place orders either right there on my Facebook page where you can click a link and go to my online store or you can go to my blog at www.stampingtoshare.com and there's always links there too. You guys have a great day. I truly appreciate you. Bye-bye everybody and we'll see you next week.